Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today we're going to talk about acceleration again, but we've talked a lot about how to calculate it, and how to measure it, and how to graph it. The one thing we didn't talk about is what causes it. So you're going to hear me repeat this over quite a bit in this video. What causes acceleration? Well, what causes acceleration is when there's a net force acting on an object. Okay? We studied the fact that the balance, the sum of all forces, when that equals zero, that it's in equilibrium. Do you remember that? And we said that's called balance forces. We also talked about the law of inertia, which says that the more mass something has, the less likely it is to want to change, and that if it's not in motion, it doesn't want to be in motion unless it has to be. And if it's in motion, it wants to continue being in motion in a straight line at the same speed until it's forced to not. Well, today we're going to talk about what happens when those forces are not balanced. You guessed it, acceleration. Let's do an example. I know I have a lot of football players. So when you, um, that's my beautiful picture of a football player, when you are kicking a football, what happens to the football? Do you, it travels, right? It moves. It does not remain at rest, and it doesn't travel in a straight line. And by that I mean in one dimension. It doesn't travel along the ground. It actually goes up, doesn't it? That's what a football does. Why does it do that? Because of unbalanced forces. So again, accelerated motion, change in velocity over change in time, unbalanced forces cause motion, cause acceleration rather, unbalanced forces acting on an object cause the object to accelerate. Here's perhaps the most important thing, one of the two most important things I'm going to tell you in this video. First is that acceleration is directly proportional to net force. So when I say directly proportional, that's what that little squiggle means, directly proportional. What I mean is, as force goes up, acceleration goes up. As force goes down, acceleration goes down. Remember that direct proportion? We talked about linear relationships, and we said direct meant as one went up, the other went up. Well, that's what's happening here. The other really important thing that comes into play when you're talking about acceleration is a thing called mass, which we've studied a lot. So let's talk about mass. Mass resists acceleration. Mass does not want to change. It's perfectly content to either lie there if it's lying there or to move at a constant speed in a straight line if it's moving. It really doesn't want to change. It's a creature of habit, so to speak. However, for a constant force, so if force is the same, and you increase the mass, acceleration goes down. Think about it. If you have a grocery cart full of groceries, and you have a grocery cart that's empty, and you push them both with the same force, the empty one's going to accelerate more than the full one. You know this. You live this. It makes sense. So acceleration is directly proportional to 1 over mass, or inversely proportional to mass. As mass goes up, acceleration goes down. As acceleration goes up, mass goes down. It's an inverse relationship. Acceleration is directly proportional to 1 over mass. 